The Genesis GV80 has been around for a couple of years. I think the first model year is 2021 model year, right? Yep, we drove that back uh, back when it was new. Yes, and for 2024 model year, this is mostly carryover from last year. But for 2025 model year, there's a facelift model. So in this video, we will talk about it and we will find out if you should wait for the 2025 model year or just get this one. Yeah, there's a lot to like about it. So even though you might want to wait until 25, we're going to be going over what's going to be changing on it. So let's start uh, with the, the obvious here. This is the Prestige all-wheel drive 3.5 twin turbo V6 powering this, uh, this vehicle. 375 horsepower and 391 pound-feet of torque, which are good numbers from a mid-size vehicle. Now, there is one thing that has sort of changed from when I drove this back in 22. You do have the option of a third row. Back in 22, it was pretty much the only way you could get the 3.5. This one doesn't come with it. So pricing has gone up by about $7,500 compared to that 22 that we drove. That's Canadian, about $7,300 in the US. I think, Victor, that's a pretty steep price increase for a vehicle that uh, hasn't really changed too much in the last few years. That's right. I think a couple of years ago, when they first launched, it was a bargain of a price. Oh yeah. Now, it's, I guess it would, I would say it's more in line of what these vehicles should be. But as expected, you know, Genesis has in, has built up their brand much more over the past couple of years with some great products like this one. So a, a price hike is justified, kind of yeah, I would sure. say. I would love it to be sort of more budget oriented still, but for what you get in this vehicle, it's definitely not budget. No, that's for sure. Now, what's yeah. coming with 2025? Because obviously that's what a lot of people have been talking about. It wasn't even like yesterday that they announced it. It's been a couple months since the 25s have been announced. So do you want to wait or should you pull the trigger on this? So Victor, let's talk about some of the exterior stuff that's going to change for the next model year. So for the 2025 model year, the biggest news is that there is a coupe version which gets you a slant back and a lift back design that looks much more sporty. And with that sportiness, you get a larger engine horsepower from the G90 sedan. So that one, you get a 409 horsepower, 405 pound-feet of torque, twin turbocharged V6 engine with an electric supercharger. But let's talk a little bit about what the, what the regular GV80 SUV will get in terms of changes. So the first thing that you will notice the most is the front bumper redesign. So the front bumper will look a little bit more sporty, bit more look, it, lo it looks a little bit more like the GV70 Sport bumpers. Along with that, you get a slightly less sharp edged front yeah. grille along with a double layered diamond pattern grille. Um, and then the next thing is you get new headlights that looks Similar to this, but it's more like the interior. That's the interior of the headlights that looks a little bit different. Other than that, not much else has changed from the exterior, right? No, just front bumper, rear bumpers changed up a little bit. New rims, obviously, you would expect with the facelift. Interior gets some pretty important updates. We now have a 27-inch OLED screen, which will look really nice when it comes out. And they've changed some of the button placements and stuff, too, because we really do find that this 24 is, is near perfection. The interior is really well laid out. They kind of changed some stuff up a little bit. You know, volume knob gets changed a little bit smaller. The yeah. HVAC controls get changed up a little bit so until we actually drive one we won't know for sure if it really is an improvement but from what we've seen so far this kind of is leading towards the better interior layout compared to what's coming for 25. that's right that's pretty much all we want to say from the outside of the car why don't we jump in and go for a drive absolutely it's at the road all right now we're in the 2024 gv80 Ooh, it has a green interior. Green interior, same as is when we drove it actually in 22, which is interesting. And it's not available in the States, but we don't get the ultramarine blue interior. So that's the trade-off. I do like it though, brown dash, green seating. Looks pretty good. It does look really good. In, in night times or dimmer lightings, you really don't notice it. You, you notice no. it being a, a dark brown or even closer to black interior. Yep. But when there's some sunlight out, it looks really nice. It, it looks very different to anything else that you would find on, on the market because Genesis is one of the few companies, 
unless you go to like Bentley level, mm -hmm. that gives you fun colors like yeah. this. No, and it's, it's something unique. So I like it. We liked it before when we reviewed it. The only difference with this and the one that we did in 22, aside from three row seating, is the, the paint as well. So we don't have the, the white paint on this one like we did in 22. But the, the major difference with this from when we drove it last time is a proper control knob for the screen. One of the complaints that I had was that it was sort of like a touchpad thing. It didn't really work very well. Now we've got sort of the more traditional rotary knob when you uh, want to control the screen. So nice improvement there. Obviously with the 24, it's going to be quite a bit different on the interior here, but I really do like the inside of this. This is just, you know, it's not over the top. You're not complicating yourself with too much, uh, you know, buttons and placements and stuff like that. But everything's there that you want. You've got all the other controls easily accessible. Screen's beautiful gauge cluster fully digital i mean there's not much more you could ask for that's right i really like these this super wide infotainment screen that we have usually when manufacturers slap on a 4x3 or even a 16.9 ratio screen it just looks a little tacky it look, looks like yep. you know they slap on an ipad but with this ultra wide screen it doesn't look tacky because you ne you can never get an ipad in this dimension yeah, in this ratio right for sure and i mean it's going to be very interesting to see the 27 inch oled in person you know a lot of brands are doing these wide screens now mercedes cadillac a couple of them that are they're putting a very large display you know mercedes is doing kind of two of them whereas cadillac has one large display on things like the lyric so yeah that's obviously the direction the industry is moving in but having physical buttons always a good plus for us but yeah the screen's beautiful you know 360 cameras all sorts of things can, can be controlled through the screen and victor you were even saying that the controls for the seats they're almost touch sensitive so you don't even need to push them you just kind of gracefully touch them you, you brush up against them with your finger and it pops up on the screen which direction you're moving and what part of the seat you're controlling that's right i think it's a super neat feature that you just touch it and then it shows you which section of the seat that you want to move whether if it's lumbar support your uh, seat recline or your seat normal adjustments or even the seat massage function you just touch it and then it shows you which button you're touching which is perfect because Normally, you don't see where your hands are touching. So if you want to make sure that you want to adjust the correct thing, yep. it shows you. It's, it's great. It's this tiniest detail that I'm so amazed with this vehicle. Now, you mentioned massaging seats. That's something that the passenger has always missed out on when it comes to the GV80, but not for 2025 at least. Finally, passenger massage will be added for the next one. So if you really like your passenger, that might be a reason to wait until 2025. But if you don't really like them too much, then just get this one. It's available today, <laughs> That's right? right. <laughs> you can get That's now. Right. So you don't have to wait because we, we don't have pricing or anything yet as of filming this for the 25s. You know, Genesis says we'll be getting that information later in 2024. But, you know, I mean, these are available today and they still look fantastic. I mean, they're not changing it dramatically that, you know, I think if you park them next to each other and you were a keen observer, you'd be able to tell the difference between the two model years. But, you know, that's what's great about Genesis. They've come up with such a fantastic design that, you know, small updates here and there just continue to make the vehicles look even better than they already do. Another thing that is leaving the Genesis GV80 with the 2025 model year is these big, nice HVAC knobs yeah. with the temperature in the middle. They're opting for something smaller without the cent without the little screen in the middle. I, I, I don't like it. I, I prefer this one. Yeah, this kind of brings back memories of Range Rover, Land Rover. They, they do a very similar setup to that where you've got these little knobs in here with the HVAC temperature in the center. So that's going to change a little bit. But, you know, again, we're still getting physical buttons, which is nice. Genesis isn't going all in with screens to replace everything at least. But... Yeah, again, when it comes to how you want a vehicle, you know, this is this is what I look for. Like, you've still got enough of what works without having to, to resort to the screen, and it, it doesn't feel cluttered. I mean, it is a very, you could say it really is simplistic in here, but it's, it's simplistic in a good way because you've got access to what you need and nothing that you don't. Yeah, and then another thing, if you're the driver of the vehicle, is that the steering wheel is changing. I... I think I think the two-spoke steering wheel is going to leave us. Just too bad because like that was really the key point of this interior. And when they finally switched over all the models to use it, it was like because it's, it's a good steering wheel. It's still going to be two-tone, which is a plus. But yeah, we're going to be losing the the design. It is going to be changing up for twenty-five. Yeah, I think this this two-spoke steering wheel really helps the Genesis brand stand out. With you know the the three-spoke that is coming, it just looks 
like every single other vehicle and it's nothing too special but i really in, I, I really would miss this two-spoke steering wheel yeah and at least you know as long as it's still going to be a steering wheel we're not going to go with a yoke i'm happy with that but that's right but yeah i mean like i like the again it's a weird design you know nobody else does a steering wheel quite like it so you know it's it's interesting you know when any of any model year changes like this come like a facelift you know usually it's it's well received and i think it will be well received but you know they kind of change some of the things that have made a vehicle like these you know the genesis gv80 so unique and stand out in the market they kind of change those things and make them a little bit more normal it kind of takes away a little bit of the charm with the vehicle yeah that's right and as usual the gv80 is a very comfortable vehicle we're oh, yeah. going over some bumps and taking some you know sharper turns and this handles it like a champ oh yeah by no means this is a sporty vehicle but it has ample amount of power and you know a very comfortable suspension that looks forward to the road and detects the the bumps and mm -hmm. stuff and when you need some power you definitely have it going uphill like this no problem whatsoever yeah especially with a little bit of snow on the road too we've got excellent traction this does have winter tires which we always recommend whenever you you know if you live in an area that gets snow you definitely do need to have it but the four-wheel drive system on this is pretty sophisticated talking a little bit about fuel economy when we did this back in 22 in quebec we did 9.3 liters per 100 kilometers when we compare it today it's minus 12 outside it's a little bit of snow on the road Victor, you said you completed yours in 10.2 liters that's per 100 right. kilometers. So when we compare the two, that's, that's sort of what we're looking at now for, for comparison, but still very fuel efficient for a, a regular V6 engine. There's no mild hybrid hybrid system on this. That's just a regular gas engine. And now I think it's time for Niall to jump into the driver's seat and remind him of how luxurious yes. this drive is. Absolutely. Let's sw swap over. All right, we've briefly come into Mexico. We're going to just do a quick launch here. We're in sport mode. I'm not going to do like a, a dig or anything, but oh, there's a delay there. <laughs> oh, that was a big delay. Uh, but there we go. We're going up and 100. So not too bad overall. I mean, again, big vehicle, 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 gets you up to speed. But I am very curious to see how this electric supercharger is going to work when it comes time to drive the coupe down the road. That's right. This engine, as you just tried, there's a little bit of lag for the turbos, but I would assume this the one with an electric supercharger would mitigate that quite a lot, right? It should. Maybe that's the reason why they're going with that, is to, to offset the turbo lag. So it will be interesting to see how it works once that comes out. It's interesting that they're keeping it only for the coupe, though. So coupe, theoretically, should be just a little bit lighter so it might be a little bit quicker obviously a little bit quicker off the line because you've got the more powerful engine but with a little bit less weight as well should be even more sporty to drive so i'm really really excited actually to be driving it. i'm not a big fan of coupe vehicles in an suv but yeah, it might be a good one to to have but i think that would the, the the genesis that we've seen now with the coupe is one of the better looking ones. Oh, right? absolutely, yep, yeah, for sure. And especially I saw, uh, I'm part of a lot of Facebook groups for, for the different car brands, so somebody posted that the new Mercedes GLC Coupe 2024 has just landed at the dealerships. And like, they're ugly. Like the back end is just, the front looks great, and then they get to the back end and they, they forgot to design it, so they just slapped on some lights. Uh, it, it looks kind of meh, but the, the Genesis, it might be the most tastefully done coupe SUV on the market, at least that I could afford. I can't afford some of the higher end stuff. Like, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, well, I'm excited to try it out when it comes out later this year. In my top ranking coupe SUVs, I still think the Cayenne looks the best. It is, uh, yeah, um, they're pretty good too. But that's, you know, a lot more expensive it is a lot to more. a GV80. <laughs> yeah. I, but, but the GV80 coupe definitely is, you know, a close second in Absolutely. my books. Yeah. So, you know, when I get behind the wheel of this, I am reminded of one of the reasons, many of the reasons why when I first drove this, I said that this really is my favorite mid-size luxury SUV. Yeah, it really does bring me home. I do sit a little high. I'm almost in the headliner here if I were to sit up straight. And that was one of our complaints back in 22 is that the seats just sit a little too high. But it was also our complaints about the Lincoln vehicle. So things like the Lincoln Aviator, which this would compete with directly, it also sits pretty high and now that the pricing is about the same you know i think people will be cross shopping this and a yep. and a lincoln and you know if you're looking for not a full sport experience then either one of those would be good you know i wouldn't say that the volvo we just drove is that comparable get rid of the hybrid you know talk about just the regular xc90 i don't know i mean when you compare this to the the xc90 this feels a lot more luxurious 
Yeah, absolutely. And that one, even though it has a plug-in portion, it's 10 grand more compared oh, to this. And I I mean, it would take me years to fill up 10 grand difference. Yeah, in I, terms you of never fuel. would. You basically never pay off that, that difference. Uh, so it's really, I don't know, I mean, like, I, this as a plug-in would be great, especially if it was only, like, maybe four or $5,000 more. But, no, I just, I love the way that the, the Genesis really it drives well. It, the seating comfort is fantastic. Space on here is great. This is how I would do it. I don't need the third row, so I'd get rid of that, save a little bit of, of weight, yeah. but also have the, uh, the trunk capacity just, you know, a little bit better because there's no seats that you got to fold up and down, so... That's, it's really, it's a tempting vehicle compared to what we've driven recently. Yeah, we've talked a lot about being in the front seats, but the back seats are also somewhere that is very pleasant in this oh, vehicle. Yeah. You have motorized adjustments for your back rec reclination and, and seats and stuff like that. It's missing the massaging seats, but so am I here yeah. in the passenger seat. So maybe their ne Genesis's next step should be adding massaging seats to the back seat as well, because oh, ultimately yeah. this, should be an area for both the driver and all of the passengers in luxury right and i mean it's not i mean you know, obviously it adds to a cost too but when you compare it like there's very few vehicles that have powered second row seating that's right. my s class which is an s class has that you don't usually see it on suvs and not even other luxury suvs so the fact you've got that on this yeah if you added massage would be even better i mean there's you know they've already got uh, climate control and everything back there heated seats so you've got a lot of the features but yeah just add a little bit more to it they make that an even more compelling offering for somebody who you know because yeah if you're if you're like me i've got a kid she doesn't need massage back there but if you're buying this because you've got other friends that you know kind of have higher tastes and they yeah. may want to have a massage back there too yeah you've also got some vanity um mirrors at the back for your just, passengers just so, like an s class yeah so it's 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 a very well-rounded luxurious experience for all of the occupants in this vehicle not oh, yeah. just the driver and the front seat passenger but also the rear seats as well the back leather seats are also very comfortable and you know you can recline quite a bit with the with the motorized function and it's very enjoyable and it's it's a very pleasant experience i think overall i'm i think this might be one of the most perfect um, uh, mid-sized luxury suvs you can get with this price it's, oh, yeah. it's still even though with the price hikes, I still think it's a bargain. Well, yeah, because like it was a steal before, and and it was almost like you know Genesis sort of had to incentivize people like, hey, you know we're, we know we're new, so here's a really affordable price point, and it helped to to really get market proliferation, and now they can bring the price up to be in line with everything else, and yeah, I'm sure they're they're making a killing off of it, but yeah, I don't see Genesis sales slowing down because of it. You know, in fact, I think we're still at a point where it's very difficult to get these vehicles at the dealership they just don't have enough inventory as soon as they come in they get sold people want them really really and there's a reason like i mean you know we've driven a couple of them you've driven a couple now victor i've driven pretty much everything in the genesis lineup and there hasn't been a vehicle i haven't loved yeah that's right so the golden question should you wait for the 2025 model ah. year or should you take this one so that's a toughie because you know they're, they're not adding enough i don't think for the 25 to make me want to wait so if it were really my money i would i'd just grab one of these or even a 22 right you can get a good deal on a, on a used one because they haven't changed too much with it but the coupe I, I almost might want to wait to get that instead so i might wait for the 25 coupe yeah i think for the exterior of this vehicle genesis has made minor minor changes that makes the whole package looks quite a bit quite a bit nicer you know with some less sharp angles and a little bit more rounded to, to fit with the GV70 along with their G90s and stuff like that. So the whole package looks a little bit nicer in the exterior, both the SUV and the coupe version. But the interior, I, I still really like this ultra wide infotainment screen. I don't think the, the 27 OLED screen is gonna be able to replace that experience because yeah. it just looks like every other manufacturer. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, this this will be a relatively unique interior setup because it isn't over the top. So I think, first of all, this will age really well. So if you're going for a 24, 23, 22, 21, 
right? You're not going to be, you know, in a bad position once the 25 has come out. Uh, I think this will age extremely well. So I think it depends on what you want out of the vehicle. Like for me, I just want to see what the coupe is about. But you know, if I've got the money for it now, there's there's no reason not to take the 24. That's right. I think this pretty much wraps it up for us today. Yeah. On the test drive. As always, we get back to everybody in the comments. So if you've got questions about this specific vehicle, we do encourage you to, to leave the questions below. We'll get back to you. If you want to know a little bit more about this, we've done two GV80s, so you can take a look. Those will be at the end of the video, or we'll also have had links at the top cards throughout the video. But we invite you to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it online. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.